What's up everyone? I'm Tim and this is my channel 40 times around where we talk about everything related to motorcycles, camping, travel, and adventure. And today we're going to talk about motorcycle riding pants. We're going to talk about some of the terms you might see if you're shopping around. We're going to talk about the difference between textile and leather and also some of the style and options that you have available to you. And while we're at it, we're going to do a quick review of the new pants I bought for my upcoming summer adventures. Stick around. So like I said, today we're going to talk about riding pants options. Now, I wouldn't recommend just wearing a regular pair of denim jeans. They're really not going to do much for you if you do happen to go down. Some of this may be kind of a refresher course for some of you, and maybe this will be some new information too. Some of the common words you might see though would be Kevlar. Kevlar is a light synthetic fiber. It's extremely high tensile. Tensile is the resistance to breaking under tension. This is going to be important if you happen to be sliding down the pavement at 50-60 miles an hour. Kevlar is five times stronger than steel. It's abrasion and heat resistant. Another term you might see is denier, a measurement for the density of fibers. The standard for this is going to be silk. In other words, a single strand of silk is one denier. It's important to note that denier measures weight, not strength. A term I've been seeing pretty frequently as I've kind of actually been researching my own new gear for this upcoming adventure I'm coming up to, um, I've been seeing the word Cordura a lot. Cordura is DuPont's original brand name for a line of their fabrics, basically just a uh, very durable fabric. You might also hear the word reactive armor thrown around. This stuff is actually pretty cool. I'm going to link to a video at the end of this video that you should check out if you're curious about reactive armor. And I'll actually put a link in the description box below. In my research for this video, I stumbled upon a really neat video that kind of does a great job of showing the characteristics and kind of explains what reactive armor is. Essentially though, reactive armor is often pliable at rest when it's just relaxed and not doing anything, but it becomes extremely rigid on impact through changes in a molecular level that I'm not even going to begin to try to explain to you because I don't really get it. But basically, it's soft and cushy when you're wearing it, and as soon as it impacts with something, that force changes the molecular compounds or structure of the the armor and it becomes rigid and protective it's pretty awesome now similar to reactive armor you may also see hard armor this is just going to be plastic armor it's not reactive it's not going to change its properties uh, typically it'll be surrounded by a cushy material just so that it's a little more comfort just so it's a little more comfortable when you're wearing it um, knee pads elbow pads things like that um, of course we're talking about pants today so this would be knee pads and hip pads <laughs> And another term I was seeing quite often in my own research was CE rating. CE rating means that it conforms to the European standards of safety ratings. Something important to know is that the CE ratings are similar to DOT standards. They're self-regulating. Uh, you can just, any company can say that it's CE approved. So I don't know how much that really means, but it's just essentially the same as a DOT sticker if you want to think about it that way. The next thing I want to talk about is the difference between textile and leather. I actually have a strong preference here and I'll get to that after I talk about kind of the pros and cons of the two. The first thing I would look at would be value. For one, textile is going to be a lot cheaper up front. However, even though leather is going to be more expensive, it will potentially survive several falls. So if you do happen to drop your bike a lot on the pavement, uh, you might be better off with leathers because they can be repaired. Um, so you pay for it up front, but if you get two slides out of a pair of leather pants and only one out of textile, then it's worth twice the price. Another thing to factor in is the maintenance of the pants. Textile, for example, is really easy to clean and care for. You just throw it in the washing machine. Uh, with leather, you're going to have to bring it to a cleaner and there's a special process to cleaning leather. That's kind of a pain in my opinion. Now, like I said, I was going to give my opinion at the end, but this is where it kind of comes into play, and that is weather. Textile is absolutely going to be better and more well-rounded when it comes to weather. Uh, whether it's wet, cold, uh, hot, anything, uh, textile is going to be able to adapt a lot better. You can layer up and layer down underneath textile to really build on it. Uh, leather is just kind of, it's going to be really hot if it's hot out. If it's cold, your leathers are they tend to be cold. I used to have a pair of leather chaps. You put them on cold and they're just cold. <laughs> they don't really do much for you other than break the wind. 
Um, and of course, when leather gets wet, that's a whole nother nightmare uh, that I really personally don't want to deal with. I'm not knocking leather. Here's the next thing about leather. They're actually a lot more protective. They're going to hold up a lot better in a slide. Like I said earlier, you can potentially get several slides out of a pair of leathers. So they are a lot more protective. And if that's your main concern, that's the route to go. Um, for me, traveling and, and covering a lot of grounds, a lot of terrain, a lot of climates, textile just makes the most sense for me. Leather just doesn't strike me as, as a very touring friendly option. Not saying it can't be done, and it's been done plenty. Uh, plenty of people have ridden around the world in full leather suits. Um, so I'm definitely not knocking it. Like I said though, my opinion is gonna be textile. So now let's just talk about a few of the style options that you have and the different types of motorcycle riding pants. The first in our lineup of categories is gonna be riding jeans. Now, like I said earlier, if you're concerned with looks and you don't wanna look like a Power Ranger or an astronaut, riding jeans are a good option. Uh, they're, they're at least gonna be more protective than regular jeans. Uh, they might have some padding in them. They should be reinforced in the impact zones, which are gonna be your knees, your hips, your butt. Uh, the things that are most likely to slide should be reinforced so that they last a little longer in a slide. Um, they do look at least almost like uh, normal pants, which is pretty cool. I was actually shopping around and considering this as a touring option. Uh, Revit, for example, has a great pair of chinos. They look like regular pants, you wouldn't know any different. And they look comfortable, I haven't actually tried them on or anything, but they look really comfortable and they look like regular pants, but they're protective, so that's pretty neat. Now, if you happen to be looking at a dedicated motorcycle pant, as in not a riding jean, some things you want to be looking at, you want to make sure that it's at least 600D or leather construction is going to be the equivalent or better. You also want to look for stretch fitting around the back of the knees, um, the, um, above your knees as well. Anywhere that you're moving and need to be mobile, you want to make sure that there's stretch panels there. It's going to make it a lot more comfortable for you. A uh, big thing that I've noticed with some riding pants is that they tend to bunch up behind your knees. And that is just incredibly uncomfortable on a long trip. So that's something you're going to want to check out as you're trying on riding pants. You may also want to consider reflective piping. Uh, anything that's going to make you more visible, especially since a lot of the riding pants, they tend to be black and they're really dark. So if you're riding at night, you need whatever reflectiveness you can get. And a lot of these riding pants will actually have ref reflective logos and, and striping and things like that built right into them. There's another style and that is the touring or adventure style. You'll notice these ones will typically have a lot more pockets. Um, and to be honest with you, my opinion on that, I think it's just for looks. I don't carry much in the pockets of, of riding pants. It's just not really all that practical. Uh, anything like my key fob or even just like keys and stuff, my wallet, that's always gonna be in my that's always gonna be in my jacket pocket. I don't ever really put those in the pants pocket, so I don't need cargo pants. For me, I think the adventure riding pants are really just, the cargo pockets are just for looks, but it does look cool, so uh, that's something to consider. <laughs> Another feature with adventure or touring pants might be a removable thermal liner and possibly even a waterproof membrane, uh, whether that be a separate layer or maybe Gore-Tex built into the pants. This is gonna come into play, like I said earlier, as you're uh, touring around, you're gonna hit a lot of different climates and a lot of different weather. So it's important to have a lot of versatility with touring pants. A lot of pants will actually have zippers on the back that, that way you can attach the matching jacket or a riding jacket, um, potentially from the same brand. Uh, as long as it lines up, you'd be able to attach the jacket to the pants. That way in a slide, it's gonna keep everything tight and together. And actually that brings me to another point that I forgot to make earlier, and that is it's really important that this stuff fits you properly. And the reason for that is if you do happen to go down, there's padding in specific places, there's reinforced fabrics in certain places. It doesn't do you any good if it's sliding all around your body as you're bouncing down the road. So you wanna make sure it's tight to your body, but not so tight that it's uncomfortable. You know, I've ran into issues with um, a jacket in particular, not so much with pants, uh, where it was just not comfortable and I tended to just strap it to the back of the bike and it really doesn't do much good in that situation. Uh, you're also going to want to consider the ventilation of riding pants. Now this is a big one for me because 
living in Arizona, riding pants need to, either need to be not super thick, like not like snow pants, or they need to have excellent <laughs> ventilation. And so what you'll look for is um, zippered pockets that basically open up and, and vent a little bit of air through your pants. And it makes a world of difference. Uh, it's nothing worse than suffocating in a pair of riding clothes that is just not well ventilated on a hot day. Now there's another style and this is the over pant. I'm not a huge fan of these because they think um, when you're putting riding pants on over your regular pants, it just gets really bulky and uncomfortable. This is really good and functional if you're commuting to work and you have your you know work pants on. Uh, you're, obviously those are not protective. So you put your over pants on over your work pants and at least you're protected on the way to work and then you take them off. But typically commuting to and from work is not a long trip. Uh, so for touring, it just, it isn't practical for me. It's, it's not my preference. My preference would be something in the range of like adventure pants, maybe motocross, leaning a little bit towards motocross, which is actually the style of pants I bought for my upcoming trip. They have 600D, which, you know, they're protective on the pavement, but I like that they're so thin and breathable, very well ventilated and very comfortable. They don't bunch up. Um, so they kind of have all the features that I look for in, in riding pants. And before we get into the full review of those, they're the climb to car. I had the BMW summer riding pants and for summer riding pants for a title like that, uh, they were pretty heavy and thick which of course makes it more protective, but they didn't breathe great and the ventilation wasn't awesome. Uh, these new ones that I'm wearing, the climb pants, they're absolutely awesome uh, for warm weather, which is why I got them because it's a summer trip. I know I'm gonna be doing a lot of off-roading. I got a lot of off-road planned for this upcoming adventure. I wanted pants and a jacket that were gonna work for that. And I think I found them. And that actually brings me to our next section, which is the review of the Climb to Car pants. So like I said, this trip that I have coming up, it's gonna have a heavy focus on off-road, low speeds, avoiding highways, and knowing that I'll mostly be in warm climates and summer temperatures. And they're an over-the-boot pant, which I kinda like because I've tucked boots into pants before. Um, you can get away with that for a little bit, but I find that it kinda gets uncomfortable on longer trips. So if you're wearing like a motocross style boot touring, I think it makes more sense to have a pant over the boot. This is gonna come in handy when it rains too. So there's these two large adjustable YKK zippered vents on the thighs. I have plenty of airflow through those from what I've seen so far. The vented accents on the knees are pretty neat, help with visibility at night. It's durable and water resistant. Like I mentioned earlier, stretch material is gonna be important in your flex zones and this pants has those. There's two big YKK zippered cargo pockets, but like I said, that's kind of, for me, it's more of a for looks thing. Um, I guess maybe if I wasn't wearing my jacket and I was walking around in the pants, I might use the pockets, but typically I don't. And another thing I really like about clothing, as I mentioned earlier, it should fit you correctly. I like clothing that has cinches and ways to adjust sizing because really one size doesn't fit all. So what I like about these pants is that they actually have a Velcro strap on the waist so that you can pull it tight and loosen it. It's really nice. And the final neat feature and part of the reason that this pair of pants is so inexpensive is that it doesn't come with knee pads and hip pads. However, it is prepared to take those as an accessory. So it does have the pockets for knee pads, hip pads. Um, definitely something I would add if you're doing a lot of off-road, some knee pads. I tend to stay away from the hip pads. I'm not recommending that, but for me, it just it's not super comfortable. Uh, so it's just not worth it for me, the hip pads at least. Anyways, that's it for kind of a overview of motorcycle riding pants and a little quick review of the Climb to Car pants. So far from what I've seen, I'm really happy with them. I'll definitely be keeping you updated on that as I use them more and more. I think they're gonna be perfect for my trip coming up. I'm planning on doing a lot of BDRs and, and off-road routes. Anyways, if you have any questions about motorcycle riding pants or any comments, make sure to leave them down below. Uh, I will go ahead and leave a link to the climb to car pants and also that video I mentioned about the reactive armor. Pretty cool video. Definitely check that out. So I hope you got something out of this video. If you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell if you haven't already. That way you don't miss anything whenever I post something new about motorcycles, camping, travel, and adventure. 
Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.